is up? What is up? All right. We are in business, guys. So I'm going to do a little training here uh, just as part of the Abundance Architects channel um, where I like to talk about everything, wealth creation, finance, personal finance, and money. Uh, so some of the things that I learned early on, um, you know, one of the probably the most useful thing that I've learned, I'm going to try to explain it to you here. I just got this this little pen, this little righty mouse pen. So I'm not great at it. So forgive me. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what is the primary difference between how poor people, middle class people and rich people spend their money. Um, it's a it's a it's a very important thing to know if you want to become wealthy, if you want to understand money and you want to understand, um, you know, how to get out of the rat race. Um, so the very first thing is um, poor people tend to spend their money on things. Right. So I don't know if you guys have any ideas about what kind of things people spend their money on, but you could say. Um, you know, material items, needs, uh, I don't know, wants, video games, uh, I don't know, toys, action figures, useless things, essentially. And not, not, not that they're completely useless in some cases, but again, these are, these are things they're, they have no real tangible value. Um, you know, this is really important and key to understand. So the the thing that you want to look at for middle class is they tend to spend a lot of their money on liabilities so cars bigger cars house um liabilities i'm trying here this is not as easy as i thought it would be liabilities um with this with this mouse so um and i don't have good enough handwriting as it is so I, hopefully this is this is workable here um you know car house vacations uh, bigger TV, you know, that, that kind of, that's, that's where there's the craw little crossover here, right? You want to buy a big TV for home, you know, that's really, that's really pushing into the poor category there, right? Cause it's a thing, it's not even a liability, but the, the problem with the liabilities is people will spend crazy amounts of money to buy a car and then they'll get the cheapest insurance. And one of the things that I'm going to put over here in the rich category is insurance. We do not at all skimp on insurance. Insurance is an investment. Um, it protects your liabilities, whether it's car or home, you know, business, whatever it is. Insurance, you, you know, get a cheaper car and get the best insurance because, you know, an expense, the, the more expensive the car, the more liability it is. So it has, you know, greater possibility of, you know, things going wrong, increased expenses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, and then of course all states are different, but um, you know, make sure that you have a really good insurance policy for your properties or your home. If you only have a home, that's good. Make sure you have good insurance. If you have multiple properties, make sure you invest in getting good insurance. So, um, the, and then the primary difference of rich, rich people, they put their money in assets. So an asset is defined as something that is a tangible and growing in value um, commodity. Could be a stock, could be stocks, right? Could be bonds, mutual funds, whole life policies, um, IULs, annuities, um, real estate, you know, that sort of thing. So. The, the key difference here is that the money is being spent and invested in areas that produce income. It, it produces some sort of return, right? So this is the most important and fundamental thing to understand when you're starting out, when you're looking at managing your money and understanding where the money goes, because primarily you would want a good portion of that money to go into these things here. If, if, you, if you can, get to the point where 50% or more of your earned income or any income is being put into this category because um, over the long term, this is what's going to pay the most dividends. So, um, and if you're over here or over here, start with a very simple savings account. Okay. 
It can be a very simple account where you just put a certain amount every month, whatever it is, $10, $100, $500, whatever you can afford when you're in these, when you're in these places, you know, you want a sacred account, no matter how much it is, even if it's the smallest amount, if you say you don't have any money, start with a dollar, that's bullshit. You do have the money. It's just that you'll spend it if you don't allocate it. So once you start allocating dollars into a sacred account that can be then dispersed into investments, you know, this is the first habit, right? It's just like going to the gym. The first habit is learning how to save, learning how to move money and have money in places where it can't be touched. And this is how you start building equity. It's how you start building wealth. You know, yes, uh, a lot of gurus will tell you saving is for losers, money loses value, blah, blah, blah. True. But again, the, the key here is that you're learning to respect money. You're learning to allocate and move money to places that is that that are useful and valuable. And this is where that habit becomes very, very, very important. Because if you just have your money in the account, you're like, oh, I have an extra 50 bucks. I'll go to, you know, I'll go out to eat or I'll go shopping or whatever. The money starts draining out, right? Just because you have it. And rather than doing that, rather than, you know, looking at where you can spend it when you have an abundance, start putting it away, start putting it away, saving, doing what you need to do. Um, prior to that, get used to not having as much money to spend on, on useless things and start getting yourself to the point where your, your priority, like, you know, I've heard this analogy so many times, maybe you heard it. If somebody was, was to take you out in the ocean and hold you underwater, how badly would you want to breathe? Pretty, pretty damn bad. If you're not, if you're not a multimillionaire, you should be breathing. This is, this is breathing. Okay. Putting that money into a sacred account, learning how to invest it. You should be fighting and clawing your way into breathing financially so that you can actually get ahead. And if you're not, and if you say money's not important, it's not a priority, I promise the younger you are and you start applying this principle, the better off you're gonna be in the future because nobody anticipates the things that life can throw at you. And it's always nice to have money. Money solves problems, point blank. Um, yeah, they say, you know, more money, more problems. Sometimes that's true, depending on what levels of wealth you're talking about. However, no money equals all sorts of problems and no solutions. So I guarantee, no matter where you're at, you want to start doing this. I don't care if it's 50 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, 1,000. If you get up to the point where you can do 1,000 or a couple thousand a month, you start inching your way over here, okay? Because what's going to happen when you have a certain amount of money in assets here, you know, your assets, whether it's a house or maybe you have enough, you bought enough stock, you know, um, you know, it's going to continue pouring money into the asset column right? You can, you can send it into your sacred accounts. You could reinvest it. You could buy more stocks. You could do all sorts of things. This is what we're all striving for, which is passive income, cash flow, and non other non-earned income. Um, so I apologize if my um, writing is pretty horrible here, but I, I, I think I got the point across. I hope it's uh, useful and valuable to you. This is the first thing that I would do if you are looking at moving from poor or middle class to rich and kind of starting to move your way through this this trajectory of, of money and understanding money. There's a lot of other things that I can get into in other videos about money, the history of money, what money is, how it works, and all sorts of, it's, you know, the fraud of money. It's so interesting that, you know, the system, it's, it's inherently based on fraud. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, it's just, um, there's a lot of rabbit holes to money, which is why I like the subject. It's very fascinating. Um, it's very historical. And let's be honest, um, you know, money does control the world. It controls our lives in a lot of ways. And if you're not a master of it, you know, you can be at the adverse effect of it. So we, the, the goal is that, you know, we serve God and not money. And so we are masters of it. It's not a master to us and it's not an idol. So, um, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please subscribe, uh, comment. Let me know what you'd like to hear more content from, uh, content about from me, etc. Uh, leave a comment and uh, I'll see you guys next time.